Hi guys, today we're going to have a look at how to play your chords more cleanly. I'm sure plenty of you know chords by now and you're just trying to get them to sound better. So I'm going to throw some tips at you so that you can get them sounding better. Alright, tip one, keep your nails short. Now you can tell if your nails are too long. Put a chord down and try and touch the fretboard with your nail. If you can touch it, well, depending on where you touch it, if, if it's pushing really hard into your finger when you get your nail down, then they're way too long. So what you have to have is them real short. And then that is the test to see if your fingers are on straight. You've probably been told a million times, get it up on the tips, yeah? So you get up on the tips and you can really make sure you're on your tips by getting your nails onto the fretboard. And if your nails are short, you're going to have to bring your fingers up and around to get them to touch. And when your fingers are up and around, they are perpendicular to the fretboard. And if you're on the tip, you've got less space, less surface area. You're not going to be on your fingerprint, so you're not going to get this sort of rubbish because your finger's not in the right spot. So, on the tips. Okay, now we've been pushing down hard to try and get our fingernails on. But if you're pushing down too hard, then you're pushing down too hard, basically, and you're gonna wear yourself out. Not only that, you're gonna be squashing your fingers down and spreading the tips out and doing all sorts of horrible stuff. So a really good exercise to do is just to play the string really lightly, I'm only just touching it, and then start applying pressure. Starting to get some bars, and there's your note. Now how much pressure is that compared to what you'd normally use? Just get rid of the buzz. So if you're not applying too much pressure, you won't be bending the strings into each other, you won't be spreading the tips of your fingers out, you won't be making the note go out of tune either, because, especially if you've got jumbo frets. And you're not going to wear your hand out, is the most important thing. You'll be able to play for longer without getting sore fingers. So, the next thing is play an arpeggio. Or just pluck each note individually and make sure that they're all sounding. So put a chord down and then just... So when something's not ringing nicely, you've got a feel in your what's going on in your hand. It could be your shirt's hanging on to the string. It's generally not though. What's happening here is I can feel my first string buzzing against my first finger. So I've got to make sure it's right up there on the tip. Now you can practice making sure your finger's not touching anything else by playing a little arpeggio. Just move it around. Do it in different spots with different fingers. Yeah. So just making sure that your finger isn't touching the next string. Now some hands, well all hands are different. So what you're going to have to do some chords I call compressed and some are expanded. So your C chord is one finger per fret, yeah? That's an expanded chord. But most of your chords are all compressed. So they're not using the, the full width of your hand like you would when you're playing scales. So the trick I do here is you can't approach the neck like you are when you're playing a scale. So nice and straight. And you can if it works for your hand. But some people they'll do that and they'll start getting dud notes and whatnot. So what you can do to make it more comfortable, turn your hand like you're turning a doorknob without bending the strings and just look at the attack angle of your fingers. So if you can get them coming more like a violin, how they play, some of the chords work a lot better that way. Like if you tried to play a G with straight fingers, they're all, you know, you've got depending how you play it, you've got two or three um, fingers on the same fret and they can get even more squishy and compressed. So to release that compression and make it more comfortable, you just turn. So you get that turn happening. 
You can still play a chord cleanly with a straight hand, but it's much easier if you can turn it a bit, if it works for you. And the more compressed the chord, the more the turn will help, I find. Now, A is a special case because there's ways and ways of playing it. The traditional way is to go with the fingers one, two, three. Some people will switch two and one around. This releases compression. But you've got this danger note in the middle now because you've, it's a finger that's behind the other two, but they're all on the same fret. So if you're practicing this one, make sure that that note's ring. Same thing with like D7, except it's a bit less compressed, but it's the same deal. You've got two fingers on either side and one that's back. You don't get it as much with your A minors and E majors. You've got one that's back and G as well, but you don't have a finger either side of that one that's back. So look out for your D7 and your A if you're playing the A with that fingering. All right, so once you've got all your notes ringing cleanly, you have to make sure that you're not getting notes you don't want. Okay, so if you're playing like a C chord, you don't want this big E bang, banging out in the bottom. Same thing with an A chord, well, a D chord or an A chord. Although, that doesn't sound as bad because, well, C and A both have E in it. You want the note name to be the root, yeah? Sounds a bit better. D. You want the D to be in the bass. So this means you have to learn how to mute a bit as well. Now, I know generally you want to keep your thumb behind, but you'll see a lot of pro players, once you get the hang of it, you should be able to have you know, your fingers behind, your thumb behind, and your fingers nice and curly, and then be able to bring your thumb up and keep that same shape. Can you see how I can pretty much keep the same shape, but bring my thumb up? So that helps with your endurance and stuff because instead of holding your hand up you can take a bit of weight on your thumb. And also having your thumb up there means you can use it. So now I'm not getting that E in my C chord. Um, with an A chord, yeah, same thing. D chord. Although you might get that A ringing out. And also once you got your thumb start up there, and also with the D chord, once you get your thumb up there, you can start hooking it over a bit and get that nice D slash F sharp chord, but that's another day. So learning to mute is really important. Another little trick I'll do sometimes is I'll deliberately go high with my finger. So with the C chord, with my third finger here, instead of putting it on perfectly, I'll deliberately put it up a bit higher. Still getting the same note, and this has the added benefit of it's further away from your D string less likely to mute it, but it is muting my E string. So I'm not getting this you know, extra note ringing out. So it's these chords where you've got the um, bass strings ringing out that don't belong. So your A's, your D's, your C's. When you get like B minor and stuff, you're gonna have that bar on anyhow. So you'll have to learn how to, you can either put your bar so that it's touching the string, curl it out a bit. It's a bit harder on the bars. That sort of touching, going high thing works there. But that's for another lesson, bar chords. So, last tip for getting nice and neat is to make sure you're not having strings ring that you don't want to hear. So the tips for having nice, clean sounding chords. Short nails. Get up on the tips. You can practice that by trying to push those short nails into the fretboard. Turn your hand and get comfortable with it. Yeah, look for compression. If you can get rid of compression, it helps. Don't push too hard. That'll push things out of tune. It'll make your fingers fatter on the tips and all sorts of stuff. Play your arpeggios. Feel where there are notes touching things that shouldn't. And be aware of it. Listen to what you're playing. So many players just get in, my fingers are in the right spots. And aren't hearing what they're playing. Really listen to what you're doing and feel what you're doing. So just, and practice more. The more you play, the easier it gets. Don't push too hard, all of that stuff. Get used to it. All right, 
get stuck in. See you guys.